Hello, good morning. Uh, this is Integrating Video into Frontier Access Control. My name is Mark Heitzman. I'm a product manager for Matrix Systems. I've been with Matrix Systems for about 15 years now. Uh, today we're going to talk about the integration between specifically the next level BMS system and the Frontier Access Control system. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, briefly talk about Matrix Systems, the company Matrix Systems, uh, as well as next level systems. Uh, and then I'm and some of their capabilities, the capabilities between both systems, and then I'm going to specifically go into the integration between the next level VMS system and the Frontier Access Control system. So Matrix Systems Incorporated, we've been in business over 30 years in the security market, access control market specifically. Uh, we are a one-stop shop. We do not only manufacture our own products and design our own products, uh, but we also install, integrate, and support our products. Uh, we are unique with our support where we do provide 24 by 7, 365 days a year support to our customers and our end users. We have major installations in aviation, healthcare, education, government, and industry. Uh, so, you know, being around for 30 years, we do have quite a, quite a few uh, large in installations, uh, as well as, you know, medium to small size installations. Uh, but mainly we do access control. We do manufacture our own uh, subsystem, um, controllers, as well as readers. Um, and then we also integrate with uh, Mercury systems as well on the subsystem level to control hardware. So I'm going to briefly talk about some of the new features in the Frontier Access Control System. Uh, we just recently came out with version R3, which does give us the ability to integrate with the next level EMS system. Uh, this photo here is showing a couple of the next level appliance products that they sell. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more here once I get through. Um, some of the features with R3 and R4 of, of the Frontier Access Control System. Also with the R3 version of Frontier, uh, we introduced the ability to use Mercury hardware subsystems. Um, we can actually mix subsystems now, so we can use uh, our own Frontier hardware subsystem as well as Mercury subsystems. Uh, Mercury is, is kind of considered a, an open standard in the access control market. Um, and non-proprietary. So interfacing with the uh, Mercury subsystem gives us the ability to use uh, many more third-party products uh, that exist currently and are used with Mercury hardware, as well as our own hardware. So we can kind of get the best, they basically get the best of both worlds uh, by being able to use our own hardware and Mercury hardware. Uh, and that is that is current in our R3 version. Our R4 version of Frontier, which is scheduled to be released in April of 2014, uh, will have a web client ability. So we are, we're currently developing that now. Uh, we'll have a web client, uh, and that web, web client is designed uh, to be able to be used on tablets and smartphones as well. So. Uh, we'll, we'll have the ability to use tablets, and, and basically we'll give our product much more mobile capabilities. Uh, along with uh, the web client in R4, we will also have uh, the ability to do multiple credentials. Uh, multiple credentials is being able to assign uh, a, a person or in the system. It, it gives you the ability to assign multiple uh, different types of credentials to one record holder. So uh, I, for instance, could be, I would have a record of, of Mark Heinzman in the system as a person, and then I would apply or associate different types of credentials to me as a person. So I might have a, I might have a proximity card that I wear every day, as well as uh, maybe a, um, a RFID or a hockey puck type device that I would have in my car to go through gates and uh, be able to validate that it's me that way. So it, it's really giving the ability to give multiple types of credentials to a single person within the system. So I want to briefly talk about next level systems just to give a, a background um, of their system before we talk about the integration. 
Um, next level systems, they create DMS systems. They are appliance-based video management systems. Uh, they run on a, a Linux operating system. Um, so there's there's no virus updates. Uh, you know the, the upgrades to the system to the uh, appliance itself are very easy to do. You can do them straight from the appliance, and there's no need for um, you know people to come on site to do these upgrades. It's as simple as clicking a button, and the appliance will update itself. Um, everything is browser based, so and it is browser agnostic. So you can use Explorer, Chrome, Firefox. Uh, you know, Safari, basically any type of browser. Um, there are certain levels the browsers need to be at, um, but for the most part it, it is browser agnostic. Uh, Next Level does not charge camera license fees. Uh, this, is, this is very unique in the industry. Um, so you can uh, connect as many cameras as you want to the appliance. Uh, it, it, it will, you, you need to stick um, within the horsepower of what that, that appliance can handle, and there, there are some basic guidelines that we'll talk about. Uh, with the appliance, you can do remote access using smartphones and tablets. Um, Next Level has a, a service that allows you to get into this appliance pretty much from anywhere in the world. So anywhere you can get a web connection, you can get into that appliance, assuming you have it uh, configured to do that. Uh, and then I have Next Level's website here. Um, if you'd like more information about that, it's nlss.com. These are some of the built-in analytics that the Next Level appliance comes with. So um, certain analytics are free. They do come with the appliance. The top three ones are premium analytics, so those do have a cost associated with them. Um, but if you look uh, beneath the top three, there are 12 different analytics that do come with the appliance that you do not have to pay anything extra for. So once you buy the appliance, you get these 12 analytics. Uh, these are all, all great analytics, very powerful, and, and they work very well. Um, but for example, line cross, you know, face capture, perimeter, um, directional analytics, uh, et cetera. So I'm just going to talk about the next level gateways a little bit more in depth here. There are a couple different models of gateway, and the, the, mo the gateways are basically um, configured by capacity. So a gateway 500 is going to be uh, the smallest gateway that, that you can get. It is going to be recommended to use 16 cameras at high def, being 720p, and run two video analytic rules. So the recommended capacity for, for this particular model is, is 16 cameras, two analytics. The gateway will allow you to add more cameras to it, and uh, basically it will, it will not prevent you um, from overloading it. So it, it's, um, basically you have to, to determine what exactly you want to do with this gateway as far as the recommended capacity. Uh, and then you can install it and go by those recommended capacities, but then you can kind of tweak things and, and you know, maybe you want to run uh, three analytic rules and less cameras or more cameras and less analytics. Uh, so basically you have to determine that uh, when you install it. Uh, the gateway provides a nice interface um, for system health that, will, that is, is very helpful as far as trying to uh, set up the gateway and, and see where you're at with capacities. It has gauges for processing power. Uh, and things of that nature, so you can see in real time how much um, how much power the gateway is using, and uh, if it needs any help anywhere. So, uh, the, it is built in the diagnostics as far as um, capacity with the gateway. Uh, the the 3000 is going to jump up to 32 cameras with four analytic rules, and then they have a 4000 and a 5000. So basically, they kind of double capacity each time they bump it up. So 4000 is going to be able to do 64 cameras, uh, and the 5000 is recommended for 128 cameras at high def. The appliances themselves, uh, they do have built-in storage on, on most of them, um, but the idea is that you can use some of the built-in storage on the appliance itself to uh, record video to. Uh, but, but generally what you want to do is um, use an external storage device. So it may be a network storage device. You, the appliances themselves do have USB built into them, so you can use USB to store video, uh, USB devices, uh, iSCSI devices, or network storage.
So this is an example of a frontier system with an L NLSS uh, gateway system attached to it. So this is going to give you a really basic high-level diagram of some of the things we're doing here. So you've got your frontier server, and over here we've got an NS NLSS gateway on the network, our IP cameras, frontier clients, uh, and then this is this is our subsystem here. So right here, these, this this would represent a matrix subsystem. So we've got a solid state rack mount building controller. Our building controllers are basically what talks to all what we call our reader control modules. Our reader control modules are the actual intelligence at the door. So these modules here run the actual doors. They validate people. They hold schedules. They hold card transactions. Um, so from an RCM, we can control actually two doors, and we can control four readers total. So we can do an in and an out on one door and an in and out device on another door for a total of four readers at two different locations. This re represents a Mercury subsystem. So this is a six-door Mercury panel with doors attached to it. And then over here, I've got a PoE single door edge controller, which is also a Mercury-based product. Uh, but this is IP to the controller, and this will control one door or two readers. And then out here, I have a representation of a mobile tablet, a mobile phone, and a Frontier web client. So with the Frontier system, when we get to R4, we're going to be able to have our Frontier web client, as I talked about earlier. Uh, we'll be able to control that through a mobile tablet or a phone, as well as we have the NLSS gateway VMS system that we can already currently control through a web client, mobile phone, or a tablet. So this diagram is representing the interface between the next level VMS system and a frontier workstation. So you're going to have your IP cameras out on the network. These cameras are going to connect back to the VMS gateway. They're going to be managed from the gateway, and they're going to also the gateway is going to determine where the camera is going to record to, what the storage devices are, et cetera. Through the network, we have our interface that's going to send information to the frontier server and the client as well. So from the IP cameras, we can set up things like analytics. Uh, we can associate cameras to different alarms in Frontier, um, and we can basically take transactions um, from the cameras and associate them to alarms in Frontier. So that gives us the ability to quickly to receive alarms in the Frontier access control system and be able to quickly re look at recorded video uh, that is associated with that alarm when it happens. So for instance, we could have a, a door with a reader on it, with a camera looking at that door. And say, for instance, we have a door forced. We'd have that camera associated with that door forced alarm. So when we get that alarm on the door forced, we'll automatically, within our queue, be able to click a button and be able to tell it to go back and show us the video when that actually occurred. Um, and that's kind of the basis for the integration, the idea of the integration between the video system and the access control system is, is really being able to, to be alarmed or alerted when things happen and to have that video be shown to us specifically at that time so we don't have to go back into the VMS system to search for these things. So some of the different features that we can do with the VMS integration. View live camera feeds from the application using the database tree. And I'm going to go through each one of these items separately. Uh, with the actual application in a minute here. We can connect to live camera feeds, feeds through the floor plan. So we have a, Frontier has a floor plan that we can, uh, we can create, we can make different drawings as floor plans. We can associate icons on that drawing to be able to control various aspects of the system, uh, doors, alarms, video cameras. So one of the things is we can actually bring up live camera feeds from icons on the floor plan itself. We can associate video cameras to access control alarms, which is what I was talking about a minute ago. So example, door force, door rejects, uh, et cetera. We can receive next level VMS analytic alarms with video clips. So very similar to um, you know, the door force, the door rejects, 
Uh, we can also get that from, from different analytic events that happen uh, within the next level system. We can review alarm-driven recorded video events from the operations screen, uh, and we can provide forensic reports of video analytic events. So within Frontier, we can go back and we can run reports on the different analytic events that have happened on the VMS system, uh, which can provide us with uh, documentation to actually go into the VMS system if we need to search for things. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of the PowerPoint now. And we're going to take a look at Frontier, the application itself. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the Frontier system itself, the operation screen, which is, is what we're looking at here. And I'm not going to get into too much detail, but uh, just give you a high-level explanation of what we're looking at here. Uh, starting from the left, we have our operations control database tree. So what this is, is this, this is an organization of all the objects within our access control system. Um, this is custom built by the end user. So I actually set up all these different groups and this structure here. So um, if you look, we've got our matrix system is at the top level. We've got a corporate headquarters database group. And we've got a date and office group. So within these different groups, we could set up, you know, for instance, floors. So I've got a second floor at corporate set up here, and I've got all my different devices from the second floor. Um, and then I've got just a general corporate headquarters here that has all the different devices as well. Um, then I've got a date and office. So for instance, if I go to my date and office and I click on doors, I've got a matrix date and office door here. So, you know, I might have one door here, I might have 100 doors here under this particular date and office. It just depends on how many are actually at that facility and how you organize this. Um, but it, this is a great way to be able to organize for your operators who are monitoring the system to be able to find up devices as well as control devices very quickly. Right here we have our alarm queue. So any activity on the system that's considered an actual alarm or an issue will come into this queue. And this is where our operators will uh, respond to these different types of alarms and be alerted to them. We also have our floor plan window, which we have talked about a little before, where we can set up our floor plans. We can define different things. You know, I've got my cameras here defined at the back of the shipping warehouse camera, my lounge camera, my lobby, my front entrance, and this is actually my front en entrance door. So I can do things like unlocks, locks, opens from the actual floor plan. I can also do the same thing with cameras. I can execute these cameras and go to live views with these cameras. Then I also have my watch window. My watch window can be configured to watch any door or a group of doors as well as any type of transactions or any, any different people within the system. So it's fully configurable as far as what you want to see. By default, I opened up this window and I'm going to see all badge transactions that occur within the system. So this is showing me that Allison Wade went through this Mercury POE door, her badge number that she went in the door, the time, date and time that she was rejected, why she was rejected. Um, so if she was accepted, she would have got accept here. And it, you know the window just keeps going. It's live in real time. I can actually pause this window if I want. And then I can go back and look at previous or next transitions, transactions. So the first thing I'm going to show is the ability to connect to live cameras. And uh, th there's, there's a, multiple different ways that you can actually co connect to live cameras. But, First thing I'm going to show is from the tree here. So under my date and office, I've, I've organized my cameras into a database group I've called videos. So if I click on videos under macros, that's how we connect to live cameras. I have my break room camera, my front lobby doors, my shipping doors, and my vestibule. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to the break room camera. So this is showing us live video of the break room here at Matrix. I'm at the Matrix headquarters here in Miamisburg, Ohio. Um, so this is going to show me a live view. This happens to be a PTZ camera. So I do have the ability here to PTZ if I'd like to. And I can kind of move around the room.
I can zoom in and out. So I have my pan tilt zoom as well as my uh, zoom in and out controls on a PTZ, any PTZ camera that is uh, set up on the system or associated with the system. I also have the ability to um, hit this drop down and do additional cameras where I can go and connect to any other live camera I have. So if I want to connect to the shipping camera here, that's, that's looking uh, at the uh, shipping area in the back of the building. So I can connect to any camera initially from here, and then I can connect to other cameras as well. And this is all live. I can also come up here, and I can do an operations live video window, which is essentially giving me this, you know, the same thing we saw before, more or less, where I have the ability to hit my drop down here and choose different live views. Now I can also connect to these cameras from the uh, floor plan menu as I had talked about before. So if I want to go ahead and connect to the back door shipping, I can do it that way. So basically we can connect through live video as well as we can review recorded video through this through this interface. So what I just showed was, was the ability to to connect to all these different live cameras that I've already defined in the Frontier system that are connected actually back to the next level system. So the next level system is giving me the ability to actually connect to these cameras through the next level gateway. So the next thing I want to talk about is, is the, the recorded video. So the recorded video functionality, as I talked about before, we have the ability to take any alarm in our system and associate a camera to that alarm. And that's how we create uh, these recorded video clips and we're able to go back to these events and see what actually happened. So right here in my queue, you can see I have multiple alarms here. And it's showing that it came from the next level gateway 500. I have a face recognized. So from here, if I right click, I can do a view recorded video. So this is showing the face recognized event that happened in the next level gateway. And that's me coming into the front door and it did a, it did a face recognize on me and then it unlocked the door, front door for me to go inside. So it's showing exactly when that face recognize occurred and it's taking me to that event. And that's really the idea behind this is that you want to associate the cameras with the alarms so you see exactly what happened at that time. Now from this window, I have some options here. You can see I've got a progress bar. I can rewind it. I can move forward in time with it. Um, I can pause the video. Uh, but basically, I've got you know the basic kind of controls that you would expect: forward, backwards, um, you know, doing fast forward, pausing the video, or even stopping the video. I can also from here choose a date and time, and I can go directly to the video by choosing the date and time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. So through the interface, the 12 built-in analytics that I had talked about earlier briefly, those, all those analytics as well as, as the uh, analytics that, that actually cost money, which is face recognized is one of them that will actually uh, cost you a fee, uh, all these analytic um, events or functions that are built into the VMS are built into our integration. So any, any type of those, any analytics that coming from the VMS system, we have the ability to take those through the interface and associate those to alarms. So right here we have a shipping door dwell. Let's take a look at this. So basically what I've done here is I've created a dwell alarm at the back of the building. So when any uh, truck comes to do a delivery, um, you know, UPS, FedEx, et cetera, I have an analytic setup that says anything that's larger than a certain size box that I, that I defined on the screen, anything that it detects as an object bigger than this box that I, that you can't see this box on the screen, but uh, that, this is the way it was set up. I, I define a box size and I say any, any object that comes into this field of view of this camera, if it is as big as this box and it lingers in this area for longer than, uh, I think I've got it set for like 30 seconds then I need an alarm for that. So 
you know, the guys in the back uh, who are working the shipping department, um, they actually have a computer back there that throws them an alarm when, when a truck or an object comes up. So this, you know, this is a way for them to know when people pull up when, the, when they're getting deliveries instead of waiting for, uh, for the person to actually get out of the truck and come and ring the bell and, and try to get somebody. They, they, know, they know very quickly when that truck uh, shows up there. I also have a break room directional alarm. Um, this alarm is basically just showing me when anybody walks this direction, like uh, Brittany here just set the alarm off by just walking across the screen here. But it's a directional analytic that tells me if somebody walks this way for this amount of, um, uh, walks this far within the scene, please give me an alarm. So this is something you'll typically, you know, basically you you see it set up for kind of traffic control. So this is something you'd see at, uh, at a lot of uh, airports, for instance, when people are leaving exit lanes and they don't want them walking the other way. Uh, this is, that's the kind of scenario you would apply a directional analytic to say, if, if this object is walking the wrong way, I, I need an alarm for that. Now I also have uh, a line cross alarm. So on the line cross, I have a, an imaginary line drawn right here. So what's going to happen is Wayne here, he's going to walk through this door. Anytime somebody walks through this door, he walked right across that line, it throws me an alarm. So this is a way for me to see people coming in and out of this door. And then I also have a reject alarm set up here. Uh, I don't really have, I have this set up on the front vestibule and it's actually, uh, this isn't quite associated with the readers, but more or less this is something you would see uh, in a very real world situation. You know, maybe you've got a high sensitive door and you want to set up a reject alarm. Anytime somebody's going through there uh, getting a reject and they should not be even attempting to go through that door, this would associate that person doing that at the reader um, with that particular alarm. Okay, so that uh, pretty much goes through most of the functionality. I think uh, one more thing I'd like to show here is, is being able to do history as well as reports. So on this face recognized, from the alarm queue itself, I'm going to do a view history. And basically, it's going to, the system is going out and it's looking for history uh, on, these, on these different um, alarms. Um, let me see if I can get a newer one here. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm have, getting any history, so I'd, I'd have to get these, these alarms multiple times to really be able to get this history, which I'm not getting right now. Um, but basically, it show, it'll show each, each time this occurs, uh, you know, once you get multiple um, examples of history, it'll show each transaction, and then you can actually go back and look at transactions that have occurred within this specific alarm. I don't think I have any history that I can really look at yet. No, I don't. Um, and then one of the other things we can do is we can run reports. So if I go to a report window, I can run basically uh, audit type reports. So we're going to come back here. And I'm going to run some alarm events. Okay. So basically what I would do is just, you know, set this back, execute a report. And now these are showing me all the different, you know, uh, transactions that are have that that have happened. So this could be useful to go back to the VMS system and actually uh, pull the footage out. We'll we'll give you the ability to go back and see the recorded video very quickly. Uh, this will give you the audit trail you need to actually go back to the VMS system, and then you can plug in these dates and times and pull this footage back uh, from the VMS system. Uh, maybe if you needed to provide that to somebody. Okay, well, that is the, uh, the frontier to next level 
VMS integration. Uh, thanks everyone for your time and have a good one.